So this is my second video as part of the youth stream at Festival at Home um, and I just wanted to share a little bit with you about uh, another passion of mine. I know my other video focused on mental health, how we look after that in the midst of all of this, but I think um, this one I really want to focus on um, what God calls us to. Um, one of my jobs is working in the Newcastle district alongside the Darlington district as a um, together missions worker which is a project helping churches to think about how they reach out to their communities uh, to share the good news of Jesus with other people uh, and bring people to know Jesus. Um, and I think for me young people, young adults are a huge part of our church. Many people talk about us as the future rather than as the present um, but I know so many young adults and young people across the Methodist Church that are so passionate about the gospel, so passionate about Jesus, that the difference they are making to their communities, to their faith communities, and to the wider church is enormous. And so I really want to encourage, at the start of this, to not be written off because of age. It's something that I've held on to for a very long time. Um, just because we are young doesn't mean that God is waiting to do things with us. Um, God wants to work with us, to encourage us, to bring other people to know him through us um, from the get-go. There's no kind of qualifications to pass. Um, we all can share something uh, of Jesus with other people. Uh, and I think that's one of the main um, important messages in all of the work that I do um, and in all of the conversations that I have is to remind people that actually we're not called to build the church. We're called as followers of Jesus to bring other people to know him. We're called to make disciples and um, help other people find out more about Jesus to a point at which they want that same kind of relationship with him. So that's a real encouragement in some ways because it makes the pressure of keeping the church um, upright and standing is no longer our responsibility. Jesus says he will take care of that. Our responsibility is person by person, conversation by conversation, helping people to know something of Jesus. Uh, Michael Harvey talks a lot about a culture of invitation. Many churches talk about being welcoming, but actually how often do we invite people? If you're part of a youth group or youth activities at your church, how often have you invited people to come along with you? You might well know that they would be welcome if they did come, but the reality is that we never invite them, so they don't ever think to come in the first place. So encourage uh, one another by inviting people. And what's the worst that can happen? People say no, but at least we invited. The invitation was there the opportunity was given. I think the other thing to think about at the moment is how is mission working? How are we able to be the church, be the followers of Jesus when we can't leave our homes, when we can't go to school or to our activities or at uni, when we can't be with the people that we normally would, when we can't worship together? How could we possibly uh, be able to minister in those times? But actually, I think right now, and I know there are lots of other people who have the same kind of feeling, there is more of an opportunity right now for us to share something of God than there has been in the last 20 years in this country. We've got an opportunity to talk about God more openly. We've seen more people engaging with worship online than ever before. We've seen people on the fringes of society finding ways to be included in what the church is doing. And we're finding the church to be at the very heart of the response to what's happening right now. Through food banks, providing funeral services, being able to support people who are most vulnerable in our communities. There's a huge breadth and depth of ways the church is able to be a help, a place of sanctuary, a place of encouragement at this moment in time. And so I think it's important for us to think about that in our own context, where we are right now, the, the community we're a part of, the village or town or city that we come from. How can we be supporting the work of the church in those places? How can we be Jesus' hands and feet to the people who need it most in this time? Is it words of encouragement? 
Is it supporting social action projects? Is it getting involved in community initiatives where it's safe to do so following the guidance from the government? There are so many ways that we can get involved and they will be different for every person. So I encourage you to look uh, in your own ways at ways you might be getting involved. One thing that you might want to think about doing is looking up the Talking Jesus um, course. That's normally something that churches deliver and you can pay to attend, but at the moment it's being offered online for free. One of the things I hear most often is people don't know how to talk about Jesus or their relationship or their faith. They don't know how to explain it. They think that people will be judgmental or not be interested. One of the things that I've found is that actually if we can share something of the difference God has made in our lives, that can make a difference in others. My experience of God cannot be taken away by anyone. The way God has journeyed alongside me, the way God has led me to, to the different parts of my life, that is my story. That is my experience. And I would encourage you to think and reflect on your own story. Where has God been in your journey of faith? We don't all have amazing um, moments of conversion. We haven't all led horrendous lives before, although some of us have. But we know that God makes a difference. If we didn't believe that, we wouldn't be involved in church or in community the way that we are. We know that God does make a difference. So find your story. Refine your story. Find a way to pull it together in quick and easy ways to explain and then share it. And whether that's a social media post, whether it's a video blog, whether it's a um, chat with friends, whether it's posing discussion points, whatever it might be, find a way to share your story. Because your story will encourage people in a way that my story can't. Your story will relate to people in a way that sometimes the stories of the Bible might not feel so real. So your story and your story with God is of infinite value, is of kingdom importance, and therefore it can't be kept to ourselves. Uh, if we find a new uh, series on Netflix that we love, we encourage everyone to go and watch it. If we find a new um, YouTube series, we're straight on to share it. A new filter on Snapchat, we share it. If our faith is the most important thing to us, if, the f if our faith is the thing that makes the difference, then why aren't we sharing it? And thinking over this time, uh, when we're not able to do the things that we normally would have, ways of sharing is a really great opportunity. So please think about how you might share your story, because who knows how that might help to make disciples. And if we do that, then God will do the rest. He will build the church and we will celebrate together uh, again at some time in the future.